launch a new multinational corporation from scratch, taking over the role of a CEO. There's a very easy way to simulate this in a business simulation game like Capitalism Lab. There are many popular business simulation games available, and I'm sure you have heard of some of those title titles already. You may have seen them already, or you may have played them by yourself. If we ask ChatGPT, what are the biggest business simulation games? We will find such a list of titles many of us have already heard, like City Skylines, SimCity Series, Football Manager, Anno Series, maybe even the Paradox um, simulations are part of it, but also you will find in this list Capitalism Lab. Capitalism Lab is a business simulation of our real life economy. So in this game, we can actually apply and try out business strategies we find and see with well-known companies in our real life. A business simulation game is a strategy game. This means it requires strategic thinking. It is absolutely essential to define a strategy before entering the competition on the market. Otherwise, we might fail with our cooperation. Of course, we want to define a strategy which we think will let us successfully accomplish our goals. Today, we will follow the goal and try to achieve the goal of making as much profits as possible with our company. Subsequently, we must take the correct decisions while executing the strategy to leverage on the benefits of the strategy. But also always keep in mind when a strategy comes with benefits, there will be in many cases also downsides or risks associated with this. And we need to constantly monitor and take into consideration such risks of a strategy. Otherwise, we might experience bad surprises and if all goes wrong, our corporation goes bankrupt and we will lose the game simply. In our session today, we will try out a strategy which is, for example, used by Apple and Alibaba. It is vertical integration. Vertical integration is a concept where a corporation owns all the stages of a supply chain which is needed to distribute a product to the end customer. This starts with harvesting the natural resources, establishing production facilities and factories to produce semi-products, the end products the company wants to sell, and then distributing those end products to their own, by the corporation owned retail stores to sell them to the end consumer. If we ask ChatGPT for well-known examples, We will find there are popular examples of corporations which follow the concept of vertical integration. For example, Apple. Apple um, is known for designing hardware, also developing the software by themselves, the operating system, and selling their products in their own Apple stores, in their own retail stores. So this is a good example for a vertically integrated company. But also Tesla. Tesla is not only producing electric vehicles, they're also producing the batteries by themselves. Also see the example of Walt Disney. Walt Disney is an entertainment company. And it's not only creating the content. Walt Disney also owns studios. Walt Disney also have their own distribution channels. In this case means their own television networks and their own streaming platforms. And they run theme parks. So for the, the industry of entertainment, they cover a lot of stages of the entertainment industry supply chain. The huge benefits of vertical integration are cost advantages because you simply skip any transaction costs you will have with suppliers being part of your supply chain. You will produce everything by yourself. This cost advantage gives you the flexibility of having a higher margin and also react to competition, lower your price when needed. But also remember, if there are gains to such a concept as vertical integration, there are also downsides. One downside of vertical integration is that it is very costly. It needs huge capital investments to um, operate and to invest into all the stages of the supply chain. And giving the case 
if the implementation of the vertical integration concept fails, the company will potentially lose a lot of costs because it will consume all of the money of the company to establish vertical integration. And this must be really work. To make it work and to protect the business model, we need to monitor our risks and minimize risks. And the main risk is that in competitor comes with a superior strategy, having a better price or a better product, and therefore customers will prefer the competitor product over our own product, and we cannot leverage on the full supply chain. Therefore, we need to create mitigation measures. And um, a good concept and a good way to go is to establish barriers to entry to the market we own and we run our business in. Barriers of entry, there are many ways of establishing barriers of entry in an, a market. Yeah, you will find them. It's for example, on such of a Wikipedia article and we will make it simple for our simulation. We will look into the marketing mix, the four P's. You might remember them, product, price, place and promotion. And for each of the four P's, we will try to establish a market barrier to entry for a competitor. So we protect our business model of a vertically integrated company, which needs a lot of money initially. For example, for the product, we will directly from the start invest into research and development to advance in the technology of the product so that we have a high quality product customers would prefer over a potentially lower quality product from a competitor, which does not have the same production technology. For the price, as said, we will have already cost advantages from the vertical integration. Further on, we will also make use of the concept of economies of scale, which means we will produce a large output, high volumes of our product so that we even have higher cost advantages. And later on in the game, when, for example, a competitor chooses to um, invest and produce and sell the same product. And we will have the flexibility to reduce the price to a level where the competitor simply cannot compete with us. Of course, the place plays an impo important, um, important um, point here um, for a good place of distribution of the product. Of course, we will establish um, stores, retail stores close to CBDs. We'll invest into land and in store, store and the setup, which enables that we can um, deliver and distribute the products high volume to our customers. The same, we will also um, buy natural resources which are usually limited, will block the access to the natural resources, keep it to our own supply chain. So it's more difficult to also get access to this natural resource. For promotion, which in Capitalism Lab mainly is advertisement. For promotion, we will invest also right from the start into advertising to build up our own brand, to create a high brand awareness, a brand all the people in a city, we will try to achieve this at least, and know this brand and associate with our product. This way, a compet potential competitor does not only have to invest into the full scope supply chain to get into the same position as us, but also has to invest at the same time in a brand and advertisement to compete with our brand awareness. And all of those factors together, we try to use and leverage on as barriers to entry to protect our strategy of vertical integration, which comes with a high initial investment. Having said that, let's now try it out and start the game. This is the main menu of Capitalism Lab. We will start today a new game. We will start a custom game. In the custom game, we will set our corporate color and our logo to um, something we can easily identify on the map. I find yellow very helpful. The corporation name will be LP Corporation. In our environment of our simulation, we will set the number of cities to four. So this gives us a significant huge enough markets so that we can actually scale our business. We will set our startup capital to very high. 
As we said, we need high initial capital investment into a fully vertically integrated company. We also need the capital for doing so. That's why we set it to very high. We will start the game in 1990. We will have 12 competitors. We will set them to a moderate level of capital, aggressiveness, pricing, expertise. Also, the competency of local competitors will be on moderate level. And for um, products, which can be imported via seaports from overseas, outside of the cities, um, we will set numbers of seaports to one for consumer goods and industrial goods. This already um, pro provides us a limited risk that simply from overseas importing our business model is already in danger and threatened. Let's check if we are good to go. Very high for cities. Only one seaport. Yeah, that should go. That should be good. We will now start the simulation. Always. And first step, when you enter the simulation, stop the simulation and give yourself some time to analyze the environment, analyze your next steps, set the next steps, and then execute them before you run the simulation and give already the competition lead time to do the same for themselves. What we see here is the map of Zürich. Part of the simulation, we will three more cities. So first of all, we will investigate our environment. The environment consists of the four cities of Zürich, Montreal, Berlin and Dallas. Zürich has a population of 1.3 million, rather small for our simulation here. A very high real wage rate of 93. This means that operational expenses will be in contrast to the other cities a little bit higher. At the same time also the prices we can sell our pro end products could also be higher here. Montreal has uh, is much bigger, 2.4 million inhabitants with a real wage rate of 72, the same as Dallas, also 2.4 million inhabitants, same real wage rate. And Berlin, the biggest city of our environment with 3.5 million inhabitants. This is big, this is good, with an um, in-between real wage rate of 80. What we don't have here is a very tiny small city below 1 million inhabitants, which is good because the markets are have a significant size, so they are attractive for our business model of creating large volume output and distributing and selling to our customers. At the same time, we also see that we have a medium to high real wage rate in all of the cities, so we don't really have a place where we have very low costs. Since we have a very high initial capital of $500 million, um, this does not hurt us so much. Yeah, we have all the money we need to in all of those um, cities run our strategy. Now, after having said that, we will now investigate how to start. What is the first supply chain and product we will invest in? For Capitalism Lab, in the base game, um, there are two products, product classes and product types, which um, work for this concept and the strategy. One is furniture in product class and the bed as product type. You only need timber and can produce in one step with one factory already a bed and sell it in a furniture store to the customer. So it's a very short supply chain. And the same is also true for jewelry and the case of gold ring. The gold ring just needs obviously gold and then within one step, you can produce a gold ring and sell it in a jewelry store, for example. And also what is good that this product relies on raw material quality. So it does not lead long investments, long time to enhance and research on a better production technology to gain in product quality. You can already by making sure your gold mine has a high product quality, you can already um, produce a gold ring with a medium level of product quality and not having invested into research and development at all until then. In our today's session, we will exactly follow this, follow this path. 
and first of all invest starting from backward vertical integration starting first with harvesting natural resources finding a place for a good gold mine setting up a gold mine producing gold as our natural resource needed when a company decides to invest in the steps before of their own own supply chain it is called backwards vertical integration we have a gold mining site in zurich with a quality of 69 this is not too high in montreal we find a gold site with a quality of 65 which is also not too high let's see how it goes in berlin i think we have two gold mines here gold one has 66 in quality and the other one has 72, which is higher. Okay, in Berlin, this could work. And let's check Dallas. In Dallas, there's a, there are also two gold mines, by the way. One is quality 69, the other is quality 95. This looks like a very good one. So let's double check that we don't oversee one here. So what we first see now is there are some cities which have actually two gold sites so this means that there's a limited number of potential gold mines in the simulation however we cannot buy all of them we will only have enough money to invest into one gold mine and um, this also means that we cannot block this resource so in the terms of place from the four p's to establish a market barrier here it will be very difficult to cover all of this we will still take for ourselves the gold resource with the highest quality so anyone else deciding into investing into mining gold will need to take and consider gold with lower quality which is already good so let's now first of all build a natural resource firm that is a mine by the way very expensive already so this is where we will already invest a lot of our natural capital we will have we will now buy the mine and set it up it costs about 75 million dollars to simply set it up we did not operate it at all until now we will now as we said we want to produce highest volume scale quickly to distribute our fixed costs and total costs on as much volume as possible so that a unit total cost per unit will decrease we will already set it up to the largest extent so that when our business scales we will be ready in all of the stages of the supply chain to scale with the rest this means we will set up seven mining units and two sales units we'll link them all as it makes sense and now we will advance the simulation by one or two days to produce the first gold here it is on 3rd of january 1990 we will pr produce in our own gold mine the first gold we can use to later on produce gold rings this is our strategy we now invested already almost 80 million of our initial capital this was a big investment here i can say we will set the margin something around 10 percent and now we will do something which you need if you want to follow this path what you really need, need to take care of um, first set internal sale to on because um, if you sell it now to the market then you will not have the barrier for market entry for an entry of a competitor into the same market to not having access to the highest quality gold of the simulation so you set it to internal sell to on and also we set training already to the highest value so that um, already our staff is specialized and trained so efficiency will grow quickly the setting of internal sale can be set up to def by default in the gameplay options so you don't have to set this up each time you will buy or set up a new facility 
Now with having gold in place, we will now, as I always do this and recommend this, we have enough money, set up a warehouse directly next to it, where we will, it serves as a buffer. We will get the gold from the mine, store it and distribute it to our production facilities. This is the gold. Let's now get it into the warehouse. Here it is. We will set the margin to an acceptable level. Only internal sale again, of course. And now we are good to go and establish our first factory. We will set the, up the factory, of course. The largest one we can buy directly next to our source for the natural resource because we don't want to lose money by transportation costs shipping it all over the place before it reaches our production facility now let's look if we have a layout already that we can use to produce gold ring yes this is a good layout in this layout we have five gold ring manufacturing units so significant scale of our production we will purchase the um, gold from the warehouse in two units, the purchasing units. We will now start the production. There, our first gold ring arrived and then distributed to the retail stores. We will set the internal margin lower. And now we can already check how we stand with our product. We see that our gold ring has already a quality rating of 69. This is, remember, due to the very high share which is provided in the quality of a product simply from the raw material quality, 60%. So this affected a lot on it. So without investing into production technology, which is only um, has only a share of 40%, we already reached a high quality product, rather medium to high quality product with 69. Of course, we don't have a brand rating. The brand um, is set to zero. We will take care of this in a few steps now. Again, we will establish a warehouse, which acts as a buffer. We will get it from the production facility. We will store it and then redistribute. There it is, our gold ring. Of course, we'll again set the margin of the warehouse to, warehouse to out about 10%. To have enough buffer to have the flexibility to set the prices later in the supply chain. So now we already have our end product available in a warehouse and can establish retailing so that in our own own stores we can sell it to the customer we said that you, while executing the strategy we also need to establish market entry barriers barriers to market entry for competitors and we already made sure that we have a high quality of the product from the start with having good natural resource quality. We already um, acquired the site and we own it by ourselves and we will only use the natural resources for our own production facilities and not sell it to any other producers. This is for place, for price, of course, later on we will see. And for the brand, for the promotion, the fourth P for advertisement, we will now set our strategy. I recommend if you set up a corporation with first of all one product class but later on you will probably invest into more product classes to have a more diversified product portfolio and um, more diversified strategy so you can actually if one of those um, businesses go down due to whatever reason that you have the chance to switch to another one and um, compensate for any losses um, I will also always recommend in the corporate details set the advert brand strategy to range brand. I would not recommend to have a unique brand per product. 
this means a lot of advertisement investments needed to establish a brand for each product. For a range brand, you will establish a brand awareness for a product class, like jewelry. There would be a gold ring. Later, we will probably have a silver necklace or a gold bracelet. Let's see. And all of them have the same brand so that our brand is established for all of those products. For the corporate brand, you have the highest synergies in the brand strategy. At the same time, you will also suffer in customer loyalty if adding a new product, which comes with a lower quality than your other product portfolio, your customers, the customer brand loyalty will decrease a lot because customers will be confused. They, they are used to having under this brand high quality products. At the same time, there's a new product offered which comes with lower product quality and they will not buy your products at all again from this brand. So that's why I um, recommend to use the range brand strategy. So this is now set up. Next, let's investigate in this city of Dallas before we start selling it, if there's already someone selling the gold ring so that we know. No, this is not the case. We will be the first one in the city of Dallas. And the city has a relatively high value market. The gold ring has some high value. The market um, has a value of 6 million, which is good. We'll try to capture all of the 6 million. The price should be high enough. Um, the local competitors offer quality of 37, which is way below our quality rating of 69, as we saw it. This is already good working out here, but the brand rating. The local competitors have a brand rating of 24 already. At the same time, um, we have a brand rating of zero, just entering the market um, and now investing into our brand. That means that we need to catch up here. We will now build our first retail store in a CBD of Dallas, yeah, in a location where we have a lot of customer traffic so that customers will come to our shop, pass by or enter the store and buy our products. We will set up a jewelry store. A jewelry store can only sell jewelry and watches, which is quite limited. At the same time, it comes with not so high monthly costs, such as in supermarket, which can offer a broader range of product classes. At the same time, it comes with a specialty store demand bonus for a gold ring. Your customers would rather go to a jewelry store <laughs> than in a supermarket or somewhere else. Now let's find a location where we will have high customer traffic index here. For example, it's 42. This one is also 42, 42. Here we have 51. This looks interesting. This one is 57 even. This comes with 60. 60 is good. Let's take this one. One purchasing unit usually can supply two sales units. We will distribute the gold ring from the warehouse. And as already decided to establish another barrier to entry for a competitor, we will right from the start invest into our brand. 100k for now, this is not a lot. However, it will slowly increase our brand rating. At the moment, we don't have a competitor here. It's only the local distributors. So this should be fine. Let's start selling it. Here it is, and now a jewelry store. We'll set a price, which um, where our product has an over rating, which is over the city overall rating. In this case, only the local distri distributors. Um, you see here a reflection of the marketing mix, the four Ps. You have promotion, which is reflected in the brand rating. We have product, reflected the quality rating. You have price for price and place is provided or mainly influenced by the customer traffic index. A good place selling point with high customer traffic index will boost your sales quickly. We see that our overall rating is already high. Let's aim for an overall rating 10 points higher. So this will boost our sales very, very quickly. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, there it is. 
Here we can directly investigate the demand and the supply. Yeah, also right from the start, you see here that in red, the demand is quite high already, almost to the full range. The supply is still in the full range because we just started and it's available in the store. Let's see how this develops and uh, later on how we need to scale. Now what we can do to even further scale and go into the topic of economies of scale, we can now do the same in all the other cities. And we will not in the other cities establish a gold mine, a production facility. Of course not. We will make use of what we have in capacity for production and mining of gold already here in the city of Dallas. So to avoid the additional investments we need for more um, for also selling the gold ring in other cities. Additionally, a gold ring comes as a small lightweight, so um, transportation costs will be very low. And so this means it's a product which can be easily distributed all around the globe. Please remember from Dallas, um, we can go to Montreal, which is medium distance. However, Berlin and Zurich will be far away. We'll store, save the game now. Vertical, vertical integration. And now set up to restores in the other cities. Let's go to Zurich. So to the CBT, find a good place for our jewelry store. It is our jewelry store. 60. Again, we found a spot with 60. No, that's good. Let's take this one. Do the same. One purchasing using unit can usually supply two sales units. We will link. all cities. We will start investing into advertisement. And that is, we will set to a good price. The overall rating is much higher than the city ever already. Um, the price is too low. We can increase the price, yeah. We should, if we have an So we have now 10 points. We are 10 points higher still with this price. Very attractive price, by the way. We have a high margin here. And we still um, can compete and can gain market very quickly. I will now again save and quickly restart the game. Now we are back, technical issues resolved. So we set up a um, jewelry store in Zurich, two cities to go, now Montreal. There's a very tiny CBD, but it will come with good traffic. Here we have 36. Always check for the customer traffic. Think of the four Ps. Reserve the good places for your own business and don't leave them to the competitor to increase any barriers for market entry. Actually, this is not working so well here. Do we find on the other side of the river a better place? This one comes with 42. Yeah, let's take this one. Again, do the same. We will invest from the start, from the beginning into a brand to establish the corresponding market barrier, as explained. Here is our gold ring. The overall rating is still very high. We can further increase our price. To also capture this market and increase our market share quickly. First gold rings were already sold. 
we see already in Zurich on 15th of January, we have a little a small share of the market share in this pie chart. You can see it. We already have for us in Dallas too. Now let's go from Montreal to also to Berlin. Berlin, I think this was the biggest city. It's of course the Superdor gold ring here. To restore more 72. That's good. 75. Yeah, this we need to take, right? Uh, otherwise, a competitor will take this. 75. Name set up. Directly go for. No. I will choose this one. Purchase from our warehouse. Sell it here. Yeah, also here, very low product, city overall product rating. I always try to have 10 points to scale quickly our sales. Yeah, this works. Good. Okay, now we have gold mine, gold ring factory, four jewelry stores in each of the four cities. One, and this way we set already up a fully vertical integrated corporation selling gold rings from harvesting the natural resources, producing the product into selling it in their own retail stores, just like Apple, for example, does it with their own products. This costs us more than 150 million of our initial capital. So this means, as you can see already, it takes a lot of capital to establish a vertically integrated company. Let's quickly revise whether we establish already all of the barriers to market entry for competitors to protect our business model. So if we invest so much money in our business model, we should also make sure that it's not fa will fail easily. We already invested into our product from raw material side and high quality, but still we have the 40% share left from the quality of the product, which comes from product technology and let's also improve there. Product technology can be improved with an R&D center. We will establish an R&D center in Zurich. Let's go there. And usually I pick a location for an R&D center somewhere not too far away from CBD, an area where we can develop. We will use all nine units of this research facility to not research a new product, like camcorder, camera phone or something, but simply research on gold rings and increase the production technology to even produce and sell a higher quality product to our customers. We will invest research and development for one year to have an expected tech advancement of 24. Now there we are. And another money, another millions went away. But however, this is very important to protect our business model. So now we have it set up for gold rings. And let's quickly check whether everything works in Zurich. I remember that we, no, don't set it in Dallas. I remember that we set up the gold mine. Yeah, so there's a very high demand. The warehouse can supply. The factory is also very high demand. The warehouse stores already gold rings. So we have a tiny buffer already for increasing demand from our customers. And if we look, for example, in Dallas into our jewelry store, we already see that the demand outperforms our supply. This means more customers want to buy it and we can actually sell the product too. We can now just leave it for, as that for the moment. Later on, we will, of course, increase the overall rating. We now theoretically need to 
somehow micromanage advertising budget. Now we need to per city need to adjust the advertising budget so that we have an high brand rating, but we are also not wasting money. This micromanagement, um, I'm not interested and I don't like to do it at the moment. So this is usually the point in time where I in the game establish um, where an headquarter. And we can also do this in Zurich. We'll develop here an area with rising land value. Um, in this area, I will establish now our headquarters. Let's first store. Save the game. Yes. Set it up here. A headquarter does not come with monthly expenses if you don't do anything with it. However, cost comes with land cost and building cost. And those are high, yeah, so it's almost more than 5 million. But we have the money, so that's why I'm doing. I'm already setting up all of the potential departments. And what we can do instead of a headquarter, we can actually hire a CMO that will take care of our brand. Yeah? So that we make sure that we have a high brand rating, high brand awareness, and this barrier to market entry is very well managed and covered by someone. We will now look for a candidate with a high marketing expertise, of course. It's Olivia Davis with marketing 90%, 90 rating from zero to 10 on the scale from zero to 10, 90, which is good. Clement Tucker has a rating of 80, which is lower. Let's hire Olivia. Yeah, this would be good. She asks for 4 million, 4.1 million in annual salary. This is expensive. So this service of not having to micromanage advertisement budgets comes with a high cost. However, we will do this now to get rid of it. Um, she can decide which product to advertise according to our brand uh, strategy, of course, which is a range brand, brand strategy where we have one brand per product class. CMO chooses media firms and decides on budgets. Target brand rating is we set to the highest value. We want to really make it serious and um, barrier to entry. And of course, uh, she should always prefer our own media firms, which do not exist now. But later on, maybe we will buy a media firm, which is also some kind of vertical integration. And then from there, um, advertise in our own media firm and recover the costs. Okay, that's it for now. Let's quickly check the jewelry store here. Yep, this works. Now we establish a fully vertically integrated company. As said, we already have a CMO. We also have research and development. We have covered all of the aspects of the marketing mix of the four Ps to establish as much as possible in the early game barriers for entry of competitors to the market of gold rings. And having said that, we have now the opportunity to do something else. We still have more than 3 million, 300 million dollars from our initial capital left. Um, so we can invest in another product type or product class to establish the vertically integrated company. We have, um, in my view, two options. Just at the beginning, I already explained that the product of bed is a good option because it just requires timber and then you can produce with on, in one step a bed and you can sell it. Or we will keep within our current product class we focus on with jewelry, keep it there, maximize synergies to pick a product type out of this class. And I think this is what we should do now because there's an interesting opportunity here. In this product class, we also have the product type silver necklace. And it just needs silver. In one step, we can go into um, silver necklace. Let's quickly check if there are competitors already for silver necklace. No, none of the cities. The markets are not, of course, not 
as have this, not have the same size as gold rings, but still it's a very significant amount. Okay, let's go. Let's go for silver necklace. We have 18th of January. We established already for gold ring the vertically integrated company and we'll now go in the next step also with silver necklace in the fully vertical business model. We have operational expenses in this year, which lead to an operational loss of almost 1 million already. So it also means that this business needs some time to scale and to get profitable. We will again do the same first step as we did this for gold. We now look for a silver mine with a high quality 82 in Montreal. Fifty in Berlin, seventy-eight in Dallas, no silver available in Zurich. Let's go with eighty-two in Montreal. It's not as high as we could add the opportunity for gold, but still. The highest one, did not find any higher one. Let's quickly check. I do not oversee. This is a very important decision, 78, because mines are so expensive. Not, you cannot simply establish a second one. Montreal 82. Yeah, let's go there. 82 is high anyway. Mine on silver. There it is. Again, seven mining units, two sales units. All need to be connected in a meaningful manner. We now I must mine the first silver. We will again store it in a warehouse. No, we do it by ourselves. Input, torque, output. Input is silver. Output again, silver. Now establish a large factory next to the location for a silver necklace. Okay, that's not the one I'm looking for. We will now build it by ourselves. There's no layout, I'm surprised. Purchase silver from our warehouse. Nope. That is. We'll add this. We'll set the margin to a lower value. We will store this again in the warehouse. We'll get the product, store it, distribute it. Here it is. And it arrived in the warehouse. Now we have um, the warehouse silver necklaces that we distribute to our retail stores to a price of $27.5, which I think should be very low. 
We have an already very high rating of 107, so this will be an easy one. Again, I think we took a good decision on our strategies. We will now go like this here yeah, to our jewelry stores and simply do what we also did for gold rings. We will buy a new floor in the jewelry store and sell it in the, on the new floor. Why are we doing this? Later on, I expect that um, the gold ring will have so many customers that we need more sales units and we can add it to them this floor and we can separate product by floors. It's easier to manage. Yeah? For the result, it does not matter a lot, but um, for our own efficiency in doing all the micromanagement in our stores later on, it's easier to manage. This feature of setting up a new floor in a retail um, store is um, not part of the base game, by the way. You need to have the subsidiary DLC. In the subsidiary DLC, they added this nice feature of setting up new floors, additional floors for a retail store, which from my perspective totally makes sense. And this is why I activated subsidiary DLC for this game. It comes, of course, with initial setup costs. Building a new floor is expensive. Since I expect that this will go well. I will already set it up full scale. That is very low city over rating. And we are selling to low or over rating seats. We set 10 points. Sales go up. We will already now get a for gold ring, it goes well. So this will not be the bottleneck. Gold ring. Good, works. So we did this in Montreal. We'll now go to Berlin. And also in Berlin, let's find our store here. This was a very nice place. Let's first scale our sales for gold ring. So that this does not get a bottleneck soon. The moment this does not play a role too much but need it anyway we'll set up a new floor for 600k we will use this layout we will already invest again a little bit in advertisement for our range brand under which the product class of jewelry is sold we have we can increase price a little bit 190 so we have the same price as the competition but overall rating is much higher due to our quality high quality let's go to dallas and also in dallas add this to our brewery store quickly This is for the gold ring. Oh, this was wrong. Yeah, this comes with a bright off now. Let's see if we can fix it. Let's fix it this way, not too high right off. it here here we can reduce the price a little bit same price a little bit lower a little higher much higher overall rating wait for the first customers yeah there they are already 1500 profit 
Next. Zürich, same here. Also sell the silver necklace. This door, of course. The price is too high. This one's good price, 10 points, almost same price. Already two brand points. That's good. Good news. We our investment in our brand it pays out. Already brand awareness right, has increased from zero to two in Zurich. Let's check. Let's take the opportunity and check our brand rating. Brand Zürich, Brand Awareness, two. Montreal, zero, Berlin zero, Dallas already one. Good. Okay, also, again, thinking from our strategy perspective, mitigating risks, we also want that our core product gains in in um, quality so that any competitor, newcomer to the market of silver necklaces does not have an easy way to enter the market by providing a similar level of product quality. We will invest now also into improving our, improving our production technology. And this means that we will set up a new R&D center Set it up also here, we will develop a small area here where we will increase the land value by aggregating a few of our company facilities. This one, again, silver necklace, one year. Yes, great, this works. Okay, so now we consumed another millions we consumed now more than half of our initial capital of 500 million. We reduced it into to below 250 million. However, those 250 million were used to set up the fully integ vertically integrated supply chain of gold rings and silver necklaces. Let's check what else we can do. Meanwhile, the, we are in the 3rd of February. We have an operational loss of 2.5 million. This, of course, hurts a lot. And we need to hope that this will work out, that our business scales quickly so that within short time, this will go up high into profits. Let's look into the reasons for this loss, operational losses. We can, can look into our income statement. We have operating revenue of 7.8 in January when we just started our business, mainly gold rings, by the way. We have high cost of sales um, due to all the retail stores we have. We have, that of course, salaries we need to pay. We have operating overhead. We have um, advertisement and PR expenses. We have training expenses because we train already now our um, workforce to get more efficient. We have R&D expensive also because of a market barrier we want to establish. We have write offs I did an error in one uh, layout. Expenses account for 10 million. That's what's the difference. So in all areas we have high, we have costs and adding up all of the items here, they are higher than the revenue. However, let's see. Yeah, I'm sure we will improve this revenue of 7.8 million is which are such often production capacity we have and stores capacity we have. This is um, just the starting point and will increase a lot. Now, before we move on, let's quickly check our competition. It's always good to check whether a competitor, though should not do it, I would really advise, tries to enter the market. It's not the case in Zurich, Berlin or Dallas. Or Montreal, we see already that our market share increased now. One eighth probably.
And now let's see what else in terms of synergies we can take with our current setup. We have in the product class of jewelry, we also have product types, gold ring, we, we have already silver and necklace also having. What about bracelets? Not producing or selling now. We need gold and silver. This is something we have. We need um, the same, same number of units of gold and silver. So this doesn't matter whether we transport silver to a location near to the gold mine or vice versa. Raw material technology is always, so again, 60%. So this will be a nice bracelet we will produce with high uh, level of technology. And um, we can also sell this in our jewelry stores. Great. Let's do this. And let's now decide whether we will produce it in, in the location, the city where we mine gold. This is, if I remember correctly, Dallas or in... Where was it? In Montreal, where we have our silver. Let's simply check the market size. Bracelet. Montreal is 5 million. Dallas is almost 6 million. Yeah, let's go to Dallas. Higher margin. We also check for, I think it's same. Montreal. Yeah, same. Let's go to Dallas. We will decide to set this up in Dallas, where we have our gold mine. We will now also establish a factory, a large factory, close to our warehouse for gold. We will look for, no, there's none. Save the game first. This time we need two inputs. One is silver, one is uh, gold. That's why we are establishing four purchasing units. We will have three manufacturing units. We will connect everything. We will purchase from the warehouse gold. We will purchase from the warehouse silver. Here we see that um, for silver we need, we have of course higher freight cost than for gold because silver is um, shipped from Montreal. Luckily Montreal is not so far away. It's not Europe at least. Um, so it's limited, not so high price and gold is very close by very short distance, so that's why transportation costs are lower. And um, now having said that, we produce hopefully very soon our first bracelet. There it is. We'll store this as user-defined layout. This bracelet comes with production cost of $300. We will store it in a warehouse directly next to it. First get it, store it and redistribute. Let's do so, that's derived. And now from here, same route as last time, Go into the cities, in the CBDs, go to our jewelry stores, establish another floor. Link to our bracelet warehouse and set a good price. There it is, already arrived in the store. Can increase, still increase the price. Yeah, now we have an overall rating which is ten points higher than the city overall. However, with brand quality being quality being ahead, brand already catching up, it's at a higher price and still have a much better product. Let's see how it goes. Yeah.
already sold the first items. You see here the bar goes up. This works. We will do now for the other cities. The same. No, not here. The store is here. We'll choose the standard layout. Let's set a good price. You can still increase more than 1000. Oh, nice. No one cannot remember that I ever sold a bracelet with worth more than 1000 per unit in this game. So it's good. Business brand is already increasing. Let's wait until the first customers buy our product. It's just set now. Moving on to Montreal. See what what we can sell it for in Montreal. The costs are three hundred seventy three. It is cost of production plus freight costs. Yeah, we need to reduce it a little bit, but still, it's a very good margin. I like that. Let's see how sales go up. First customers bought it. Great. Now in the city of Berlin. Big city. Probably will be a city where we will need more jewelry stores soon. That's arrived in Berlin. We can five. So transportation costs are five dollars per piece. We need to reduce the price to to re yeah this so we still have higher price than the city of all and then high margin at the same time due to high quality and already beginning increasing brand awareness we have now an overall rating which is 10 points higher than city overall for bracelets we will also after having set up all of the jewelry stores with bracelet for bracelets we will now again in Zurich set up an R&D center, let's do here, and make sure that we also improve our production technology so to increase the barrier of entry for any competitor. We need the bracelet. Yeah, that's it. And there we are. 21st of February 1990, almost two months. Let's complete the second month. And we have set up the fully vertically integrated product class of jewelry of the simulation. We see that the low, the high losses of the first month of January did not repeat. The bars are getting shorter, so the losses get less. We already reached almost 20 million of operating revenue, which is great. High high price products, yeah, quickly reach 20 million. We have expenses in a similar range already now. This means that the operating profit is still one, is still a loss of almost 1 million, 900K. But um, I'm expecting that this will soon will change. Now let's again check whether any competitor shows up. Could not, I really would not recommend for any competitor. I don't see in any city. Yeah, we already in some cities like Zurich, the smaller ones, I guess, Montreal, we, Dallas, we already have a market share of 30%. This means we are growing very, very, very quickly. Good, so this is already a very good setup. And I think we managed to get through the initial phase of setting up the vertically integrated company very well. We can now take a short break. I will be back in a minute and then move on.
now I'm back. Just to resume and summarize what we achieved so far, in the first two months of 1990, we set up a fully vertically integrated company with huge capital investments. 300 million were invested into research facilities in a headquarter, into a gold mine, into a silver mine, into three factories. Um, that produce a gold ring and silver necklace and a bracelet. All are sold in our own owned jewelry stores in all of the four CBDs of the cities part of the simulation. We will now check and we should do this from time to time um, the healthiness of our supply chain. We should check. So our jewelry stores we already built with the highest possible capacity and let's also check in our supply chain if we see any and identify any bottlenecks so for silver definitely this looks like a bottleneck the demand the internal demand by the way is much higher than the supply this comes from mainly the client in montreal this is this is production facility for bracelets. The factory, and you can see this here in the analysis, runs, this is really nice, good to see here now. This factory runs with 100% utilization of the production capacity. So it runs most efficient way we can run it at this point in time. We are investing to training, so there could, could be more efficiency gains soon. But for now, there's no one sitting around doing nothing. At the same time, the limit we have at the moment is that we cannot purchase as much silver as we need at the moment for the production. So it's utilized 100%, but soon I think we come into the situation where we will have even higher production rates and um, our silver mine needs to catch up. The situation also in the warehouse is that we cannot store any silver necklace. Simply all the stores are still requesting more and more. We see in the output unit that still the supply can hold with the demand. So this is fine. Though we have some issues here, we will not double or extend our capacities in the output stage. It's still fine. Let's move on to Dallas where we have the other production lines. We have the production lines of Grotering where we still catch up with the demand in the warehouse means that the factory here for gold rings, it's a 97% utilization rate, really nice. Um, the gold mine is also producing gold, very good, reaching break even soon. We have um, also a factory for bracelets. Um, the utilization rate is still at only at 60% because we just simply set it up. It's now ramping up. We will see 100% hopefully soon. And um, all of the bracelets are currently delivered to the jewelry stores who demand them for their purchasing units and sales units to sell it to the end customer. Let's move on like that um, and think of what could be our next step as an investment. So there are different options now. We, we purely with our corporation rely on the product class of jewelry. We are not so much diversified, so we could think of investing into a second product class, which is interesting for us. And we can also extend our vertical integrated corporation. And um, therefore, if there occur any losses in any of the product classes, we can compensate with the other product class. This puts higher resilience and robustness against stress and competition. Additionally, we could also do something else we could invest into a media firm in the cities or in one of the cities so that um, we will use our own media firm to advertise our own product our own brands and so that our expenses for advertisement will not go to an external party we will keep within the company let's look how expensive such of a media firm is i expect the highest expenses for our brand advertisement costs i expect in the biggest city because we need to of course do the highest the most advertisement to reach all of the 3.5 million in berlin let's see how expensive the media firm in berlin is and um, we have in
Berlin, we have a TV station. A higher rating of 46.5 percent. We have a radio station and we have where is it? Maybe somewhere here. Newspaper publisher. Where's the newspaper publisher? Here, here it is. This one. All of them. And the break even, I think. Mm. Setting up a media firm. This is here, building types, media firm. We can decide to, for example, establish a second newspaper publisher. Someone with the lowest rating. The setup costs will be 80 million. This is a huge investment. Monthly costs will be 1 million. This is something which is really expensive. We are still in the losses of our vertically integrated corporation and taking from our remaining 200 million, 80 million simply by adding a newspaper publisher and probably having to compete highly with the local government newspaper publisher. Probably not the right way to go, too risky. I don't want to take the risk now. Let's go into an industry where we don't see such high competition and where we expect profits coming from a properly set up corporation and not being threatened by our competitors. As I explained, furniture is also for the startup of a corporation. It's an interesting, interesting start, especially in the product with the product type of bed. It's only you need one natural resource, this is timber, high share of raw material quality in the overall product quality, high necessity index, by the way, because everyone needs a bed to sleep in, right? And um, only one production step. We see at the moment no competitor in selling beds. Let's check whether this can be imported. Yeah, so one thing we need to take into account is when we invest in this, that competitors have an easy way to compete and get into the industry by themselves. There is a seaport in Zurich, which imports bed from overseas outside of the four cities. Those bed come with a quality rating already of 52 and has a price of 140. So there's a high margin. Yeah. So now the question is whether we want to go or bad. If there's an easy way for the city of Zurich to get it from overseas for low price and a high quality. Interesting question. Definitely in Zurich this will be a tough one. But bed are bulky. Beds are heavyweight. Beds are not easy to transport. Beds have high transportation costs. So distributing them Beyond the local market is very expensive and will eat up a lot of the advantage of the margin of the cost advantage you will also have from here. So this means that for the city of um, Berlin, being not too far from Zurich, this might still work, but exporting that from Zurich to Montreal or Dallas on a different continent is probably too expensive. And this is why um, we could establish this for Dallas and Montreal, North America, and leave the market in Europe for now. Let's check whether not by trans. Also have it in another seaport. In Montreal we have, just to see the chair, it's still furniture, right? Berlin, 
Oh. Double check before we do sucker of a big investment in a full supply chain, right? Let us know. Okay, let's in North America um, go and do the bad business. Our next step today. Do we have a diversification in our company, not purely relying on jewelry, but also having a second product class where we invest money, where we earn profits and can, if there are any losses, can compensate them. We have a timber site um, of 65 in quality in Dallas available. There's no other timber site in Zurich. It would be 84, which is good, but we will not take it for now. In Montreal, I don't see a timber site. In Berlin, I also don't see a timber site. So this means, this is interesting, only two timber sites in, on each of the continents. We will, as we will produce it in North America, we will take the one we can. So the quality is not high. As in Europe, we will take the one from Dallas, the one we have. This comes with a risk. Yeah. Of course, first of all, it's an advantage. Only one timber side, and we will own it. We will buy it. No one else having access to timber in North America in our simulation with two cities, in North America. But there will be, in the course of simulation in the next years, there will be new timber sites discovered. And those new timber sites will definitely come with a higher quality. This means there might also be, of course, lower quality, but usually I expect that there will be higher quality. There are usually sites um, which have higher quality. This means that in competitor, investing into exactly this timber site, which will be discovered in a later stage of the game, will have an easy way to also produce bad with high production with high production like technology. So this is not without risk. However, we will do this now. There's no other competitor doing so. For now, we will own the own the only logging camp. We will do this now. Set up a natural resource firm, firm a logging camp on timber. We will directly from the start full scale to sales units seven units for logging timber a lot of timber now that is we will first of all again have a warehouse directly next to it serves as a buffer, buffer that we can store. And then from there, we will now set up a factory directly next to it. In this factory, we will create, we will produce bed like this. We'll link to our warehouse to retrieve the timber we produce in our own logging camp. We will start the production now. We have the third bed available. We will reduce the internal margin a lot so that we have the buffer in the later stage and reach the selling point in the retail store, furniture store it will be. We will also, of course, store it in a warehouse. Input store output. Must be in. Yeah. There it is. It comes with costs plus freight costs with 68 almost.
we already see that only transporting it from here over the street to the warehouse, we already have transportation costs of more than $5. Yeah? Now imagine you will transport it to other cities. We'll do later. Yeah, it will be much higher. The cost will be much higher. So we now have bed and we need to sell the bed. Bed, of course, and no one will um, dispute this, cannot be sold in a jewelry store. We need to set up a furniture store for this one. Furniture stores are more expensive than jewelry stores. This means that we will, it comes with higher monthly costs, but that are also with high margins, so this should be fine. We'll now look for a good place to set it up. The big one, so not all places are fine. 42 here, 21, 36. Let's take this one, 42 is fine. This will be expensive. Never mind. we will, from the start, set it up full scale. Now, also here, we have added operational expenses in for our jewelry products, all of the product types in jewelry product class, we have one range brand. So any investment in advertisement would also have synergies between all of the products. Now with that, having the product class of furniture, we will have and establish a new brand with its own brand awareness. And we need to do all the investments the same as for jewelry for furniture to establish our brand. This is where we have a, where we have a limit in the synergies by simply choosing this brand strategy. At the same time, please remember, our jewelry has very, very high quality. It's already 66, for example, for bracelets. Also others, due to the high quality of the natural resources, we have a high quality rating here. If we would harm now with the bed having a quality rating of 47 only, 20 points lower almost, we will harm our jewelry brand and we don't want this. And that's why we will separate this. And this is why the ranged brand strategy, I think is the correct way to go now. We will purchase the bed from the warehouse. Now it arrived and we will set a good price now so that customers will come to our store. You also remember that for jewelry, we could even in some cities increase the price yeah, to still have an overwriting much higher than the city overall. Here, we need to drastically reduce the price. We, we are selling bed for $309, whereas the, the city, the local distributors are selling it for almost 360, 20% higher price. However, to have a higher overall product rating with the lower quality compared to our rural products and the brand rating of zero, we must go this route. So we have a good, good, good margin. Let's see, sales go up, this will work. And we will now not only establish a furniture store in Dallas, but also in our second North American city in Montreal, because we expect the transportation costs will be acceptable that our margin is not too much damaged. Let's check to have the comparison. The freight costs to this furniture tour are $16. And now we will go to the city of Montreal. We will also in Montreal establish a furniture store. Let's see. We will do this next to our jewelry store. Why not? We benefit from the customer index traffic generated by the jewelry store. Maybe someone buys a gold ring and afterwards directly buys, goes into the furniture store and buys in bad from us. Yeah, we will do this. We will exactly do this. We will just set it up next to it here on here. 30, 30 seconds. Here it is. We will choose our plan. We usually choose right from the start invest into our furniture brand we will link to our 
own bed from our own warehouse. We will sell it in the city of Montreal and now see that transportation costs went up a lot. Yeah, instead of $16 in the same city, we have now $78 in Montreal. So it eats up a lot of our margin. And what we also see here is, which hurts us a lot again, is that the local competition is tough. Is tough. Yeah, high quality compared, high brand rating already, 34 needs a lot of money. We need a lot of money to catch up with this. So we need to reduce a lot to get a similar rating. Yeah, we will not take the 10 points, but now we will go with seven points difference. And hopefully it will improve very, very soon. This is where you see how this impacts us a lot. Yeah, it's just the four piece brand zero, competition 34, product quality 47, competition only 10 points behind. Brand overcompensates this a lot. Price already attractive. We need to reduce a lot transportation costs, which is a limit for economy of scale in this case. A limit for the economy of scale. We cannot scale to all four cities, four cities because transportation costs are simply too high. But still, customers enter our store and buy our product. This is great. Let's get this. We invested another millions. 100 million left. We will also, in the same way, set up now. What was not here? Yeah, it was here. Set up also here a research facility, an R and D center. Let's do here for bed. So that we catch up with the, we compensate somehow our low rating. One year, that's it. So also this is now done. Good. We have invested a very large share of our initial capital from 500 million. We invested 75%, which is 400 million into bed, silver necklace gold ring and fully vertically integrated bracelets. We sell them in our own retail stores. And um, for the moment, we are still making, we are still losing money. Our operational expenses are still higher than our operational revenue. Let's close the month and then investigate now in income statement how it goes. We've almost finished the month of March. We are now in 1st of April, three months in the simulation, gone four product lines set up, that are fully vertically integrated, 400 million invested, and still losing money. Year to date, almost 5 million. We have an operating revenue now within a month, the last month of 30 million. Nice, but also operating expenses, though so we still did an operating loss of 500k we can do this this is not too much this is not too much here to date we already have a revenue of almost 60 million what we can do to quickly improve our cost our our um, income statement we probably do not have the opportunity to uh, are not willing to uh, change our cost structure we want to go for economies of scale we are investing to training and to our brands so all of this needs to be done however we can increase prices even more get even more revenue and probably to this compensate we already have four bracelets for example in the city of zurich we have a brand rating of an overall rating of 47 due to the higher brand rating now of 24. We are much better than the competition in our overall rating. So let's reduce the price, increase the price to still have a better overall rating, but earn more money. We'll do this in another view now. There's another view where we can do this. 
it goes faster. You do not need to jump from city to city so much. So here in Zurich, no, this is not a view which helps us. We will do it in Zurich first. We will increase the price a bit, even further increase. For bracelets, we will also do this for silver necklace. Maybe we can go one. Yes. Always remember, price increases, customers will not like it. The customer loyalty, of course, will suffer. Yeah, Customers will be shocked by the higher prices. They will say, no, I don't want to pay this. Some of them will not buy it. It will probably reduce the demand. But still, we are growing. We hope that still uh, the demand will be high enough so that in the end, wow, also the gold ring, over 1,000 euros per unit in Zurich. You know, oh, let's save the game. We go now to Montreal, like it's here, yes. We will also here, brand rating already 12. We'll increase the price. Maybe another one. For bracelets, we will increase this for silver necklace. No. And for gold rings, we also will not increase. Montreal does not have so much potential. Let's look to Berlin. No. No. Maybe here. Yeah. Dallas. Yeah. Gold ring price increased. Silver so necklace. increased prices so this should make up for the losses we will keep for now a very comfortable buffer of our initial capital roughly 25 percent a little bit lower 95 million 95 million yes almost 95 million and let's first move into um profitable area before we will do further investments so now and yes, it worked. 10th of April, we already reached a bar in the green area. So this worked great. We are also selling bed here. Already profitable in this store. Here, by the way, you see it. Olivia is managing this 500K per month into our new brand. Brand ratings already won. Let's quickly wrap up. We now reached the profitable area. Let's quickly close the month just for the fun. Of course, from time to time, there will be more operational expenses of advertisement budgets are, for example, increased and we might have losses for a couple of days and then our revenue will grow again. And we will catch up with this. Hopefully at the end of our April, we will be in profitable area. First of May, let's look into the income statement. Last month, this was April, operating revenue 32.6 million, operating expenses 31.975887 million, which means operating profit first time of more than 600k. Yay, we managed to get our company profitable. And I'm sure, because the trend says so, that this will um, improve now in the next months. And without the need of much changes and adaptations, we might earn a lot of money really soon and quickly. However, we cannot just blindly let it run. We need to pause it now. We need to stop it, save it, and continue another time because our competitors, they will not sleep. Yeah? They will see if they see an opportunity, if they try and if they dare to move into our product classes then we will have to manage the situation and um, maybe revert our price increases to catch up with any superior rating of our competitors whatever 
However, for now, we manage within four months to get into the profitable area with our fully vertically integrated company. We have in all four cities, we have all product types from jewelry product class completed. We also established barriers to market entry. And we even in North America, in the cities of Dallas and Montreal, we set up fully vertically integrated the bad selling